Linux Mint is an excellent solution for anyone looking to speed up an older, slow PC. You're going to get faster boot times, faster loading times, and simple tasks that your system may have struggled with, such as browsing the internet, watching videos, or editing documents, will feel much, much better. However, it is important to be aware that Linux Mint is not magic, it's not going to make your computer suddenly able to run AAA games or anything like that. Additionally, some Windows applications are not compatible with Linux. Uh, with these factors in mind, Linux Mint is a great choice for anyone looking to improve an older PC's performance, um, especially if the only thing they're really planning on doing is lightweight browsing, watching videos, editing documents, and aren't planning on doing anything super resource intensive. Um, but if you are considering following through with um, the tutorial I released yesterday, I do recommend watching this video first so you have a good idea of everything up front. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with some of the basic functions. In terms of accessing applications, Linux Mint uses a menu-driven interface, which means that all of the applications on your system are organized into menus. To access the main menu, you're going to click on the Mint icon in the bottom left corner of the screen. This will open the main menu where you can browse through different categories of apps or search for a specific application by name. For example, I can type Firefox and that is going to pop up. If there was an application that you wanted to install, one of the cool things the Linux Mint has is its own app store. To access that, you're just going to search for software manager. It should be the first thing that pops up and it's going to open um, basically a little app store. And through this app store, you can search for various apps. You can see you've got Steam, Spotify, Google Earth, uh, tons and tons of things that you can install. And it's super easy. For example, if I wanted to install Google Earth, I'd just click on it. I'd click install. And then once it's installed, I'd hit open and it'd be good to go. To access settings, you're also going to use the start menu or the main menu. So you're going to go here and then you're going to go to the control center. Best way to do that is either to click this icon here or if you can't find it for whatever reason, you can just type control center. But you click on this and it'll bring up all of your system settings. So you can change various things like uh, the appearance of the desktop, the behavior of the mouse and the keyboard, uh, network and internet settings, and so on. And while I'm in settings, I'm gonna go over a couple of cool things. The first is workspaces, which is something that you have on some other operating systems. Basically, it allows you to have multiple desktops, even if you only have one monitor. So to access it, you're going to do control, alt, and then the up arrow. And you can see I've got some workspaces here. I've got four right now. If I only wanted two, I could, I could delete or I can add some. And then I'm just going to have two for the sake of simplicity. You can see on this workspace, I've got these two apps open. I can do control, alt, and then the right arrow. It swaps to my second workspace. Let's say I want Firefox open here so I can have it running. Control out left will bring me back to the first web uh, workspace and I can kind of just cycle between the two. You can also just delete this and then Firefox will come back into the first workspace. Another neat thing I want to show you in system settings is called hot corners. This is something that um, basically it's something that's on other operating systems, but you've got four corners on your screen and you can enable some of them to do certain tasks. So. For example, I can enable the top left corner right now. I have it set to show all workspaces. So if I hover my mouse there, you can see it just um, brings all my workspaces up. This one on the top right, I have set to show the desktop. So same thing, I put it in the top right and now it's my desktop that's shown. So just another neat thing that you can do through settings. Now, one of the more important things you need to know is how to force close an application if for whatever reason it freezes. Of course, on Windows, if you have an application that's frozen, you go into the task manager, you can click on it, and then you would hit end task. There's something similar that you would do, so I'm just going to open the file explorer. Let's say for whatever reason this app was frozen, or I just, I just needed to kill it, and for whatever reason I couldn't. So what I'm going to do is do control alt t That brings up the terminal. And then you're going to type sudo xkill. Hit enter. It's going to ask for your password. And then you can see my cursor has turned into a little X. You can click on this window and that's going to kill it. So just a neat kind of little trick that is sometimes useful to know. Next thing I'm going to go over is some simple customization. So you can customize the desktop um, just like you would on any operating system. Uh, you can right click and just change desktop background from here. And you've got some images that you can pre-select. And you can see I've changed mine to this uh, mountains. 
You can also go to your control center and there's different themes that you can choose from. You can kind of mess around with the appearance. So for example, you could change to a darker theme, different buttons. I can change my icons, can make the folders pink instead of green. You can change the desktop, like start menu, kind of just mess around with it. There's, there's so many different things that you can customize that it is pretty fun to play around with. All right, next thing I'm going to do is go over some of the pre-installed applications. Most importantly, you've got an Office Suite pre-installed called LibreOffice, which is an open source program, um, but it is actually fully compatible with Microsoft Office. So let's say you're working on another computer, you save a Word document, and then you want to open it in LibreOffice on, on your new computer or, or your Linux Mint system, you can and the LibreOffice suite is going to have most of the same features that Microsoft Office would have. You can even type up a document and then when you want to save it, you can save it as a Microsoft Office format. So for example, you can save it as a .docs, I can save it as a doc, save it as an HTML, kind of all the same ways you'd be able to save something in different formats in Word. You can do that through LibreOffice. Another pre-installed application that's important to know about is Firefox. That's going to be your default web browser. So it's pinned to the bottom here. It's also accessible through the start menu. You do have Chrome, which you can download if that's your preferred browser. You can get that through the software center. You can download it online. Those are probably the two most important. Other than that, you kind of have just some simple stuff like video player, music players, like a simple drawing app, that sort of thing. All right, so the last thing that I want to show is how to install Windows applications on Linux if they are not compatible already. So with many applications that you run on Windows, just like using Google Chrome as an example, they make a version for Linux, so you don't really have to worry about it. You can just install it anyway. But there are some applications which are really only designed to work on Windows. But there is a sort of workaround. It's called Wine and it allows you to run Windows applications on Linux. So to install it, you're going to go to this link, which I will have in the description. And you're literally going to copy these commands one by one in your terminal. So again, control alt T to open your terminal. You're going to copy this, hit enter, 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 and then finally copy this, hit enter which is what I have done. And you can see that it is currently installing. So I'm gonna give this a few minutes and then I will show you how to use it. All right, so once Wine is installed, I'm gonna show you how to use it real quick. I'm gonna try and download Notepad++, Notepad++ which is a application really only designed to run on Windows. But I'm gonna show you it should work seamlessly through Wine. So once I download it, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the folder where I downloaded it. If I right click, you'll see I now have the option to open with Wine. If I double click, that's actually the default now. You can see that Wine has started to load up. Since it's the first time I'm using it, it's um, installing some packages, but that is completely normal. All right, so there we go. So now, uh, see, I've got the installer for Notepad++ here. I'm just going to go through the installation like normal. It even thinks that it's installing it in like just a regular Windows location. So just next, 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 so install. Boom, I'm going to hit finish, I'm going to let it run. And you can see that it is a Windows application, an EXE that is running fully in Linux with no problem. There's a couple applications where this isn't going to work, um, like some it works better than others, but overall it's a great solution um, for those few applications that you might, or, or those few instances where you might want to run a Windows application. But again, kind of my thought process with it is um, if you've got a really old PC, uh, it's running really slowly, it's taking forever to boot, it's uh, just like loading is taking forever. That's not really the type of PC that you're going to be doing anything super heavy duty with. You kind of just want to give it some new life so you can browse the internet on it, kind of do simple tasks on it, maybe do some work, but nothing really heavy duty. And if that's you, then it makes more sense to change your operating system to Linux Mint, save yourself from forking out hundreds of dollars on a new system if pretty much this is all you're going to be using it for. But that's pretty much all that I've got for this video. If you got any questions or there's anything that I forgot, just drop me a comment and I'm always happy to help out. 
Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to watch my guide on how to speed up your PC and install Linux Mint. And I will see you guys in the next video.